guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. Right, uh, you notice we're on the finance screen. The reason for that is because I don't want to give away too much uh, about what's been going on until such time as we actually get into the uh, highlights, which we'll see in a second. If we could get, I don't know, three, four hundred likes on this video, that would be amazing. Even more would be even brillianter. Uh, I don't know. If you are still enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. Now, today's question of the day is uh, this. Actually, no, sorry, what we're talking about. Let's see some highlights of the games that we've played so far. We've got the Johnson's Paint Trophy. Uh, no, we haven't. League Cup. And of course, we've got some league fixtures so you can see how we've been doing. I'll see you guys in a sec. Continuing to stay in shape. McGoldrick across, and it is 1 0 to Ipswich. Finally, we have broken. Our resolve has been broken. Maitland Miles' corner. Nudson's header and it's in the back of the net. Wimbledon nil, Ipswich 2. Jonas Nudson with the goal. There we go, guys. Wimbledon nil, Ipswich 2. We held our own for a lot of the first period of this game, but then they, they were just too strong for us. Reeves with a free kick all the way across and Elliott's in there and that is a goal. Crawley nil, Wimbledon 1. Tom Elliott, first ever goal for the club. Great start. Edwards, Fenton, and it's in the back of the net, and it's Fenelon, in fact, not Fenton. Shamir Fenelon, Crawley 1, Wimbledon 1. Already got a goal for his name today, Falk him into space. Clark can turn, Clark can score, there we go. Crawley 1, Wimbledon 2, Jordan Clark on his debut, makes it 2-1 to Wimbledon. Why for Odebaggio? Oh, Kinsella's gone straight through him, and he's gonna see red here. This is not good. Rooney. Rooney's long-range strike has gone straight in. Crawley 2, Wimbledon 2. Luke Rooney with the goal, and you can't deny him that is a magnificent strike. There we go, Crawley 2, Wimbledon 2. Kinsella sending off probably cost us the win there, but we've still got a good point. Gaffney's ball in. Headed, oh my god, headed straight in by Core. We've dominated this game, and they've scored one from a corner. Disappointing. There we go, Wimbledon nil, Cambridge 1. I really have to say, we really should have won that game. Um, did everything right the day, but it just wasn't our day. Kennedy's ball to the back post, O'Donnell brings it down, back across, Ibahire, and it's a goal for Carlisle. They've managed to finally hit the target and they've scored, and this is why we have to take our chances. We've missed the penalty, and now we've come to regret it. Oh, it's, oh, it's deflected all over the place. Shea makes the save, and oh my god, what was that? Terrible play from all angles there. Bad defending, bad goalkeeping, 2-0 Carlisle. Bullman. Out wide for Kinsella. Here we go. Can he get the ball in? He can. Taylor's in there and amazingly it's been saved. And there it is. Carlisle 2, Wimbledon 0. Really disappointing. A very even game. We missed a penalty and we missed an absolutely glorious opportunity and that's what's cost us. Right guys, we're back. So, um, yeah. Um, question of the day. So before we do the question of the day, you'll have seen what's been going on now. So I'm just going to show you some stuff to do with the squad while I talk about the question of the day. And today's question is this. Who do you think will make the three-man shortlist for the Ballon d'Or other than obviously Messi and Ronaldo? And I think for me that's an obvious one and that is... Um, that's that's Neymar. Neymar will be on that list. The way he's playing at the moment is outrageous to think that he wouldn't be. Um, he might actually, if he carries on playing like this, have a shot at potential, maybe even win. I don't know. Uh, he's playing outrageously well at the moment. So I'd have to say Neymar would be the one uh, out of those that I would be sort of most impressed um, with this year. So who do you guys think will be on that? And who else do you think deserves sort of a mention in the Ballon d'Or shortlist this year? Now, as you can see, this is our sort of stats page. I want to kind of show you uh, what's been going on before I show you the league uh, positioning and everything. So the last five games, Josh Falkingham has been our best player over that period. And that's why he is our player of the month um in my mind anyway that's why i'm doing this i'm saying player of the month josh falkingham um as for the worst player paul robinson unfortunately he's not done a great deal his key tackles have been pretty low he's made a lot of interceptions but then again the same as everyone else to be fair um but overall his performances have not exactly been uh great frankly uh, so let's have a look at the league now we're actually sitting 18th which for me is a bit of a false position i know it seems low and i know it seems bad but the point is i don't think we were that bad in those games i'm um, just taking a little look at them Ipswich, fine, you know, that that's understandable. Cup game, we played a weak inside as well. We were expecting to lose that one. Crawley, I think we'd have won that game had we not had Lewis Kinsella sent off. Um, we were doing brilliantly up until that point. Taking the lead, that was looking like a shoe-in. Cambridge, we should have won that one as well. We were at home, we were brilliant. They got that chance, took it, goal. And against Carlisle, we had a penalty, which we missed. Then we then missed an absolutely guilt-edge opportunity, and that was when they scored their goals. We could have been 2-0 up at that point. So we're playing okay. Um, it's just a bit of a... A worrying start though with a sort of bad run of form but we do need to sort of pull ourselves out and hopefully we can do that today against Exeter City which is where we find ourselves I haven't made any more new signings I'm scouting a few more to try and take my time over it um, but Jordan Clark has played which is good I don't know if he'll play today because his match fitness still is not exactly perfect but we're gonna get into it so yeah we really should have done better um, against the likes of I mean we played well enough against the likes of Carlisle and Cambridge uh, Carlisle we were probably the better side for the most of the sort of first 60 minutes of that game but the moment they scored we just couldn't deal with it unfortunately it's a real shame so, uh, we've given ourselves two tactics now. One is um, 
the original one, which is the one with control, which I've just called Uncle Bulgaria for namesake purposes, um, which has got a kind of control setting. It's got the high line and it's got um, like mixed passing. Then we've got an option which, to go to counter, which is a much deeper line with longer passing, because obviously to bridge that gap to, for tougher away games or to defend a lead or things like that. Basically, that's the plan. But today, because we're at home, we're going to be going with Uncle Bulgaria. Uh, I might have a third tactic called Orinoco if I can think of one. Now, Taylor Elliott Clark, that's actually looking a lot better now. Clark's getting up to match fitness with his ideal. No, like, one stars in the team, which is good. Reeves will play there because Tony Harris, unfortunately, again, he can only seem to play one game in a row. He can't play two games in a row at the moment. His, like, stamina is so poor. But there we go. So let's get into it. Tactic accomplishment uh, in terms of that is looking good. We should turn the highlights back on so you can actually see them. But I'm hoping for a solid performance today. Is that Clinton Morrison up top? I think it is, you know. Um, we've looked good, frankly. Crawley was the only game that we didn't look completely fantastic. We got a point out of that and should have won it, probably. Um, Carlisle, I think maybe Carlisle could, should have been a draw, probably. We were as good as them, but they took their chances and welled under than that. But we should have taken our two chances in that game. But Cambridge, we should have won hands down, and we somehow didn't, which was disappointing. But the point is we've got to learn from this and sort of find ways to work away round these sort of problems when the tactics arise. 4-4-2s generally were okay against. Cambridge's tactic was abysmal against us, really. I know they won the game, but... You know, on another day, they comfortably lose that one because we didn't take our chances. They're saying more long balls, but I'm not entirely sure about that, frankly. I don't think long balls is ideal because, uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. I could always switch it up, of course, in the middle. That's a... Uh Oh, well done. Tom Elliott is so useful in that position because it allows Lyle Taylor to get up top, collect the ball in these sort of positions, and then spread passes out wide for people like Barry Fuller. Lewis Kinsella is so much better than him, though, and that's the problem. Fuller's ball across. Elliott's across, and again, these are the sort of chances that we were missing, basically. Uh, we missed two chances like that against uh, Carlisle, and one in the Cambridge game as well. Taylor, back for Falkingham. In for Clark, and he's missed it. And we are, f well, frankly, we're the better side against Exeter here comfortably. And this is the problem. Um, I don't really know how much more I can get out of them in terms of getting them to take their chances. We've already got it on much lower tempo. They're all told to shoot less to avoid those situations. And we're also... I'm constantly telling them to concentrate. I'm not sure what else we can really do to encourage them to hit the bloody target, frankly. Um, I don't really know what we can change because, frankly, we're playing well. So I might just leave it as it is and hope that it continues. But that's the problem. We're just not taking our chances. And I think that might just be because of the quality of the players we've got. But the thing is, Lyle Taylor's not a bad player at all. Um, Lewis Kinsella has actually not had a good game today, which is a shame because he's usually pretty reliable. Um, I'm going to tell him to concentrate because, again, for some reason, we're not getting a lot of shots on target in this game. We're shooting too much and I don't really know how to stop them from doing it. Uh, Kinsella may actually have to come off because he's not doing well for fitness. And, oh, he's had a 6.8 now. I wonder if we actually undo that. I'm just tempted to maybe bring Carly Osborne off for Nightingale. Just as he's on a booking. We don't want to get him sent off. Tom Elliott, have we got an option? Not really. Akin Fenwa's still not fit yet. Um, Meads. Akin Fenwa seems to come back from fit illness. Not illness. Injury. And then immediately get injured again. It's very, very frustrating. Um, let's see. Is that really wise? Have we got Tony Harris? Reeves is a bit knackered. And Harris is a very, very solid player as well. Might get him on as well. So Nightingale and Harris are on. We need something. Because look at the stats for this game. We should be winning this. And it just isn't happening for us. Meads. A 1-0 win I would take. Easily. Um, I would absolutely love a 1-0. Uh-oh. Hoskins has got a bit of pace here. And weirdly no one's gone to track him. That's a bit strange. Shea with the big save. He's come up trumps for us when it's needed. And he's made some really solid saves this year. But my point is that... What's often happened is that we'd play a brilliant game, have loads of chances and miss them all, and then end up conceding to a goal similar to what that would have been had he put it in, basically. And it's frustrating, because I'm not sure what we're doing wrong. Because um, tactically, it's working in terms of creating the chances. They're just not sticking them in. And I'm not really sure how uh, what else I can do instruction-wise to try and promote that kind of play. Uh-oh, Hoskins is through. And again, saved by Shea. So this is what I mean. I'm just wondering if maybe we should switch to um, the other tactic for a bit because they seem to have changed something and they're pushing at us a bit more now because I feel like they think that they can get something from this game and if they carry on playing like this they will um but do I go counter I'm thinking if we go back to the other one I'm going to switch it to that tactic but then switch it to control because I don't think going counter is wise move right now we're going to have to get Kinsella off because he is knackered and he's on a yellow and unfortunately we don't want a lazy uh well not lazy we don't want a tired player's tackle coming in and getting him red carded basically it's not worth it ah oh come on don't lose this game again nightingale clears right get this break on clark up for elliot we've got longer passing on this time so we should be able to get men forward taylor there's plenty of players over meads good ball knocked down taylor kennedy's in and it's saved again and i don't know the chances are there 
and we're just not taking them at the moment. It's such a disappointing thing to be seeing, but it's a common trend, and I'm not sure what we can do to stop it at the moment. And Lyle Taylor has apparently given us given away a free kick there. Not sure how, but hey. Um, Butterfield should just clip this long. He's gone short. If they score now, I'd be very, very annoyed because um, we've not taken our chance. I mean, we couldn't be annoyed at them for scoring, obviously. Because, well, we can, but you know what I mean. Um, Harley, don't let them slip it through. Hoskins, Grant. Oh, is that an own goal? Oh, my God. How have we lost this one as well? I don't get it. I just don't get it. We're playing well. We're ta creating chances. We're having shots. We're getting into good positions. And we're just not taking the chances. I I don't even know what to say. And then we get caught in these sort of situations because we don't take our chances. And I'm not entirely sure what to do about it. Grant's fit. Also, what was that from the goalkeeper? Um, Just, I don't know. <laughs> what... What in the hell do you do in those sort of situations? I just think we're going to lose another one. We need to get some, I don't know, maybe a team meeting. I'm not really sure. It's just, it's weird because we're playing really well most of the time. Uh, this is probably the best we've played in quite a long time, actually. And we've still lost. Uh, are we just really unlucky or... I don't know. I, I really don't have any kind of offering on that one, unfortunately, guys, because we've not actually scored in three games now, which is a real problem, and I'm not entirely sure why, because we're creating loads of chances. But there you go. Um, this is something I'm going to have to desperately work on, because we do not need a start like this to the season. It feels like we're doing everything right, and yet we're still losing the games, and that's a shame. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to take a look at the player instructions themselves, but I don't know what more I can do to get them to take their chances, um, frankly, because it's, you know, we've only conceded six goals in five matches, but the lack of scoring has been a problem for us too. Um, so we're right down there at the moment, but hopefully we can turn this around. We need to turn this around. We cannot afford to get sacked. That would be disappointing to say the least. So in the next episode, guys, I'm um, probably going to do the Northampton game, basically, because it's a home match again. Mid-table club, hopefully we'll be up there with them at that point, because, you know, only a couple of wins away from being mid-table again. And provided we can get something going, because we started so well and things have just really hit that win against the defeat against Ipswich really just seemed to harm the confidence and I don't like that kind of thing really so we are going to have to really push forward um, but if you've got any ideas and don't just say oh change the tactic because clearly the tactic is creating chances it's as simple as that I don't know how to make them take the damn chances though is it just because they're not good enough players or is there something else to it is there another instruction that I'm not using that perhaps would allow them to take their chances more we've already got a low tempo they're told to concentrate they're told to shoot less um I don't really know what else we can do but there you go guys if you have enjoyed this episode despite the defeat please do drop a like on the video that would mean the world to me and if we could get well actually it doesn't really matter just like the video if you enjoyed it basically and if you're enjoying this series so far and are pumped for what hopefully will be a bright future after a rocky start um and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. That would be amazing as well. And I will join you guys in the next episode for the Northampton Town game, where hopefully we can try to flatten things out, get a couple of wins, get the confidence back. And maybe it is just a case of confidence. Maybe our confidence just got knocked badly um, by the Crawley and Ipswich games. We've just been able to not recover properly since then. I'll have to wait and see. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.